بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we thank Allah subhanahu wa taala that blesses us with another opportunity to be amongst the teachings of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahl Bayt alayhum as salam. We have reached the 13th verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 13, where Allah has given us more characteristics of hypocrites. Allah states, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَاءِ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَاءُ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ and when it said to them, the hypocrites, believe as the people have believed. They say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? Allah replies, verily, they are the fools, but they are, but they know not. If you remember and you follow us within our episode, within a previous episode, we discuss what can we make to prevent ourselves to become a hypocrite. Because hypocrisy is not something that overnight it comes out. No, it's about the heart, it's about our intention, it's about our action. All of them together. If I do something that I don't believe, or if I say something that I don't believe, that is called hypocrisy. That my intention and my inside is the opposite of what I say and what I do. There's a beautiful hadith that we mentioned that these hypocrites do to adding up of the sins and illnesses and disease that they had within their heart, they became hypocrites. And that's like a domino, has a domino effect. In order for us to stop it, we have to do and apply this beautiful actionable item from this beautiful hadith that we have. Where the Imam alayhi salam states, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسِبُوا وَزِنُوهَا Imam alayhi salam states, calculate your own deeds. Within, an, within another narration, Imam says, calculate your deeds. It's not, he is not from us, the one who does not calculate him, his deed or her deed on a daily basis. Every day, we need to be calculating our deeds. How many rewards I have gained and how many sins I have gained. Both. At the end of the night, I will be able to determine this day that I take one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahl Bayt alayhum salam or I got away from them. It's very important for us to keep this in mind. It's a very beautiful and important action plan if we want to be from Ahl Bayt alayhum salam. And if we do not want to be from the hypocrites where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is a severe punishment waiting for them, we have to start calculating our deeds, knowing where we stand, how much reward we have. Because shaitan makes us believe that I have a lot of rewards. Oh, I did this good deeds. I did this good deeds. I did this, this, this. But he makes us forget about the negativity and the sense that we also have committed. And if we put them both on the scales, narr narration states that on the day of judgment, they bring the believer and they put his deeds, the good deeds and the bad deeds on the scale. He looks around within his deed and it matches the good deeds and the bad deeds. He looks for one la ilaha illallah that if they have, maybe the angels have missed it and they haven't written it within the, his deeds. If I have said one la ilaha illallah that can save me, that can make the scale on the side of the good deeds to be heavier for me to get to heaven. One la ilaha illallah. We have these narrations amongst us and these teachings. So it's a good refreshing for us. This is the way that we should read the verses of the Holy Quran and the ahadith of Ahl Bayt alayhim as -salam. That I want to be on the right side. I want to be righteous. I need to be aware of myself. I have given this example numerous times. Like a businessman, they have weekly reports within the business. They have weekly reports, monthly reports, quarterly reports, yearly reports. How much we profit and how much was our expenses. Cost benefit analysis. How much I gained and how much I lost. We do this within our business. Why don't we do it within our spiritual life also? We can make an Excel sheet. 
We can become a creative and start with an app or whatever it is for us, for me to be able at the end of the night, go and check myself. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven good deeds. Alhamdulillah. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I had X amount of sins. I do right away. I take the rosary. I put my head on the turba and I do istighfar. I will let go of these negativity. If not, it piles and piles and piles. And I'll see one day I'm committing sin. People are giving me advice, but I am not taking advice. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا and when, there is, when it's said to them, hypocrites, believe as the people have believed. Did they not? They will say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? Verily, Allah says, verily, they are the fools, but they, not, they know not. They get to a point, another character. So, so first, in order for us not to become a hypocrite, we have to start analyzing ourselves. Where do I stand? What is the level of my spirituality, my faith, my iman, my religiosity? What level is it? Because I might think of myself, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm really religious, I'm very spiritual, my faith is very strong. But when it comes on the paper, I know my flaws, I know my shortcoming. Again, back to the business. We think we're doing good. Oh, today we made millions. Not knowing that within the next 30 days, we didn't make any, even any penny. So we should not get happy how much we made today. We have to look at throughout our life. One sin every day. If we were to commit one sin a day, that's 365 sins a year. And how much of that? And let's see how many good deeds we have done. What is the balance? Will we balance it. Am I on the right side or am I on the wrong side? Another characteristics of the hypocrites. Allah will see again. I'm trying to. Teach myself and you, brothers and sisters, the mindset that we must have when we read Quran and the hadith of Ahl Bayt and the stories of the life of Ahl Bayt. Pay attention. See how I draw an actionable item from it. And when it's said to them, the hypocrites, believe as the people have believed. So I think to myself, People also do come and advise me. They tell me, Mustafa, do this. Mustafa, do that. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is not part of the belief. This is a sin. This is a reward. Pray on time. Haram. Haram. So they advise me. How do I react to this advice? Am I like the hypocrites where they say, they will say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? Do I have that kind of personality that people either do because I have shown an image I have shown a personality to them that I don't want to hear advice. Or as soon as they come to me and they advise me, it's like, who are you to advise me? It's the same thing, but they have it in much worse reply. I am so and so. You are younger than me. You, are, you don't know what I know. Who says you are right? Once, twice, three, four times when people come and advise us, when they see this kind of reaction, they will stop advising us. When people tell them to the hypocrites, believe, be a believer, a true believer, that your heart and your tongue and your actions matches, you are a true believer in heart and tongue and action, they will say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? Allah right away replies to them, verily, they are the fools, but they know not. These people are the fools themselves. And they are losing khasar dunya wal akhara. They're losing this world and life after death. How? Because in this life, they have to show themselves that I'm a Muslim. They have to do their five daily prayers. They have to pay their khums and zakat. They have to go to the war defending the Rasulullah during the time of Rasulullah. The month of Ramadan, they have to fast. So they're doing what a typical Muslim believer does, but they're not getting a reward. So they're going through the hardship of, for example, going to month of Ramadan in the heat, fasting, paying money, defending the Islam and Muslimin in the battlefield. They're going through that without any reward. And Akhirah Allah says that there's a severe punishment waiting for them. What kind of life, life is this? Neither they enjoyed this life, nor life after death. Both. They, that's why Allah says, verily, they are the fools, but they know not. So the action plan will be, second action plan for tonight. Let us be open. 
Let us be as much open as possible. Look around. Tell other people. Advise me. Amir al muminin the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, says, the best friend of mine is the one who gifts me what? Money? No. Wealth? No. Position? No. Clothes? No. iPad? No. Xbox? No. Car? No. House? No. My best friend is the one who gifts me my mistakes and shortcoming and wrong actions. My best friend is the one who comes to me and tells me, Mustafa, this, what you did, it was wrong. He is my best friend. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, doesn't have any mistake. Infallible. Haq. Truth. Quran. It's all Amir al-Mu'mineen. He's teaching you and I. So what do we learn? Let us be open to advices. We take it. We take it into consideration. Do not react. No, this is, this is and try to justify yourself. No, listen. Inshallah, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, sister. I really appreciate this advice that you gave me. I'll think about it and I'll see how I can bring it into my life. Next time they come back again and they come back again, they might be right and they might be wrong, but try to take it in. See, this is the way we should read the verse of the Holy Quran. This mindset should be that every verse I read, how can I, what is trying to teach me? It's not about just reading Quran for thawab of it. There is thawab, but if we can get more out of it, why not? Next, as we said, they are losing both world, this life and life after death. This is foolish by itself because they are, they have double personality. When they go inside, they are something. When they are outside, there is something. That is very, very harmful to one, to an individual which has double personality. In front of a people, he shows, I am something. And inside when he goes, he shows something else. They have double personality. So they are spending their energy, their thinking, their mindset, their power, their potential. Either be a disbeliever or be a believer. Why in the middle? Be a disbeliever that is okay. You're just going to enjoy this world. Okay, go ahead. See where you're going to end up. Or be a Muslim. See the happiness and a Muslim, a believer that truly practices Islam. How joyful it is for him when he stands and says, Allahu Akbar, and he communicates with the creator of this universe and these universe. universes. So you haven't felt this. So they go back and forth, back and forth. When they are outside, Chapter 2, verse 14. The next verse we get to. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ When they meet the faithful. So, basically, the meeting is not that they went to them. No, they're walking in the streets or they go to the masjid somewhere and the meeting happened between the faithful and these hypocrites. They say, the hypocrites, they say, we believe we believe. We are a believer. But when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We were only mocking them. We're making fun of them. We're making fool of them. We are with you. Shaytan here, shayateen him, it's not about Iblis, Shaytan, the Satan that we know, the jinn. No, shayateen him, because Iblis, is the, in the, the jinn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, he was amongst the, the angels, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to prostrate, do sujood for Adam, and he didn't do it. And he is Iblis. Whatever action comes out of it is called shaitan, shaitana. When something wrong you do, it's called shaitana. So these other disbelievers, these other hypocrites, when they get together, they say, that when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We were only mocking them. Look at this double personality. They are mocking them. Right away, Allah replies back to them. Allah says, It is Allah who mocks them and leaves them bewildered in their rebellion. You try to mock Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you try to mock the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mock you. And he will leave he will leave you, he will leave you bewildered in the rebellion. So very important. 
And there are beautiful narrations. We have to think and bring these to our lives. Taking notes. How can I work? Which part of my life I'm saying something that I don't believe? I'm acting about something that I don't believe. Where is the problem? I need to diagnose myself. Before getting to more practical and more actionable items from the, from the narrations of Ahlul Bayt since our time of this episode is finished, we will conclude with reminding ourselves with the two action items that we gave, we, we mentioned. Number one is that we must start calculating our own deeds and holding ourselves accountable for our deeds, good deeds and bad deeds. Number two, taking advices and be open and asking people, our relatives, close friends, parents, brothers, sisters, uncle, cousins, whomever at work, advise me. Tell me my mistakes so I, so I can, inshallah, enhance my personality, my faith, my iman, my religiosity. We will conclude this episode with the most important dua, and that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi, ajrallah ta'ala, farajuh al-sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a. Wa tumatta'u fiha tawila. Barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen.